Welcome to the Scanning Transmission Electron Microscopy Imaging and Resolution Training course. This is for the Electron Microscopy Unit at the Central Analytical Facilities of Stellenbosch University. I am Dr. Alicia Buertis and I am presenting with Madeleine Freisenberg. So here is what we will be discussing today. Uh, firstly, the components of STEM, and then we will move on to optical arrangements of STEM and TEM, and then we will talk about the electron beam interactions, deconverged probes, STEM detectors, the advantages and spectroscopies in STEM, and then other techniques that have been developed for scanning transmission electron microscopy. Images are formed by electrons passing through a thin sample as well as being focused in a fine spot and scanning over the sample in a raster formation. Like TEM, STEM requires very thin samples and looks primarily at beam electrons transmitted by the sample. High resolution STEM requires very stable room environments to combat vibrations and temperature fluctuations in order to obtain atomic resolution imaging. STEM is preferred over SIM because of its improved spatial resolution. STEM is more user-friendly than TEM, and it is also possible to collect other signals such as secondary and backscattered electrons. So let's discuss some of the components of STEM. The thermal emission gun is a source of the electrons. Then we have the condenser lenses, uh, which focuses the electron beam and determine the resolution of the microscope in STEM mode. The scattered electrons can be registered by three different detectors. The bright field detector, which is also abbreviated as the BF detector, collects the electrons transmitted in the path of the beam close to the optical axis. The annular dark field and high angle annular dark field detectors are used to record the electrons scattered out of the path of the beam. The objective lens and all the relevant optics are positioned before the specimen. The electron beam scans over the small section of the sample, and this scanning process generates the image as a whole. Bright field and high angle annular dark field detectors are complementary to EDX information. The stem differs from conventional TIM in that the electron beam interacts with a small section of the sample. In TIM, a broad beam is interacting instantaneously with the sample. You may have heard of a few terms used in STEM, such as convergent beam electron diffraction. We will talk about this just in a moment. And then you've probably heard of microdiffraction. This uses a very narrow beam to carry out highly localized X-ray diffraction measurements of a very small area. Then we have nanodiffraction. Electron nanodiffraction uses a nanometer sized electron probe to record diffraction patterns. Then we have diffraction imaging. Uh, X-ray diffraction topography is an imaging technique based on Bragg's diffraction. It provides a two-dimensional intensity mapping of the beams diffracted by a crystal. It is used for the visualization of defects present in the crystal volume. Then we have the convergent beam electron diffraction. The CBED is a STEM technique that provides information about crystal structures at a specific point in a sample. In CBED, a diffraction pattern is acquired, which is equal to the size of the probe used. CBED differs from conventional electron diffraction in that CBED patterns consist of diffraction disks rather than spots. The width of a CBD disk is determined by the convergence angle of the electron beam. One of the main advantages of the stem over the TIM is that the signal that is generated by the electrons are scattered out to a high angle on a high angle annular dark field detector, uh, which is chemically sensitive and a sample with a definite crystalline arrangement is not necessarily a requirement. The capacity of a stem uh, generating these different levels of contrast is commonly known as Z contrast. Z corresponding to the atomic weight of the element that caused the scattering of the electrons. One of the principal advantages over TIM is that STEM enables the use of other signals that cannot be spatially correlated in TIM. These signals are secondary electrons, backscattering electrons, characteristic X-rays and electron energy loss. It is possible to collect both bright field and dark field simultaneously and easily control the dynamic range of detectors during analysis in STEM. There are two imaging modes in STEM, dark field and bright field. 
In STEM, bright field detectors are located in the path of the transmitted electron beam. This detector collects intensities of unscattered direct beam. In this mode, the contrast in the image is due to varying thickness or density inside the material. Denser or thicker areas will thus appear darker in the image, while lower density and thinner regions appear bright. Actual bright field detectors are located in the center of the cone of illumination of the transmitted beam and are often used to provide complementary images to those obtained by ADF imaging. Annular bright field detectors located within the cone of the illumination of the transmitted beam have been used to obtain atomic resolution images in which the atomic columns of light elements, such as oxygen, are visible. ADF detectors collect intensities of scattered electrons. In annular dark field mode, images are formed by four scattered electron incidents on an annular detector, which lies outside of the path of the directly transmitted beam. High angle ADF collects intensities of electrons scattered with a larger angle compared to those collected by ADF. HAADF detectors make it possible to form atomic resolution images, where the contrast of an atomic column is directly related to the atomic number. Directly interpretable Z contrast imaging makes STEM imaging with a high angle detector an appealing technique. To continue with annular dark field detectors, the Z-contrast images are formed by mapping the intensity of high-angle scattered electrons as the electron probe is scanned across the specimen. Z-contrast images are incoherent, have double the resolution of coherent images, and do not reverse contrast with focus or specimen thickness. The images represent a direct map of the scattering power at atomic resolution. There is no phase problem in an incoherent image, so it can be directly inverted to the object avoiding the need for numerous simulations of trial structures. Then I would also just like to mention differential phase contrast, which is an imaging mode which relies on the beam being deflected by electromagnetic fields. DPC imaging enhances the image contrast of weakly absorbing low atomic number objects in optical and X-ray microscopy. Then we get universal detectors, uh, called 4D stem detectors. Recently, detectors have been developed for STEM that can record a complete convergent beam electron diffraction pattern of all scattered and unscattered electrons at every pixel in a scan of the sample in a large four-dimensional data set. This 4D data set is a 2D diffraction pattern recorded at every 2D probe position. The 4D data sets generated using this technique can be analyzed to reconstruct images equivalent to those of any conventional detector geometry and can be used to map fields in the sample at high spatial resolution, including information about strain and electric fields. Here I'm just showing you an example of bright field imaging. Uh, a sample of ABS was plunged in an osmium tetroxide solution for three days, and the osmium tetroxide stained and hardened the unsaturated rubber phase of the ABS. Osmium tetroxide reacts with a double carbon bond of the betadiene part of the polymer. The heavy metal will increase the scattering of electrons in the rubber phase and enhance the contrast compared to the unstained matrix made up of the styrene acrylonitrile. The rubber phase appears darker due to the scattering. So besides staining, the osmium tetroxide also fixes the rubber phase. So a 95 nanometer thick slice was cut with a diamond knife uh, from the stained ABS sample and used for imaging. Thanks to the hardening of the rubber phase, it was possible to cut it without tearing. The sample was imaged with an instrument equipped with a transmission detector, and the researchers worked at 30 kV with a bright field detector. And these are the images that they have acquired. There are various types of spectrometry in STEM. Firstly, we have electron energy loss spectroscopy. As the electron beam passes through the sample, some electrons in the beam lose energy via inelastic scattering. So as the electron beam passes through the sample, some electrons in the beam loses energy via inelastic scattering interactions with electrons in the sample. In electron energy loss spectroscopy, also known as EELS, the energy lost by the electrons in the beam is measured using an electron spectrometer. This allows features such as plasmons and elemental ionization edges to be identified. 
Energy resolutions in EELS is sufficient to allow the fine structure of ionization edges to be observed, which means it can be used for chemical mapping and elemental mapping. In STEM, EELS can be used to spectroscopically map a sample at atomic resolution. Recently developed monochromators can achieve an energy resolution of 10 electron volts in EELS, allowing vibrational spectra to be acquired in STEM. Then we have energy dispersive X-ray spectroscopy. An X-ray spectrometer is used to detect the characteristic X-rays that are emitted by atoms in the sample as they are ionized by electrons in the beam. In STEM, EDX is typically used for compositional analysis and elemental mapping of samples. Typical X-ray detectors for electron microscopes cover only a small solid angle, which makes X-ray detection relatively inefficient since X-rays are emitted from the sample in every direction. However, detectors covering large solid angles have been recently developed and atomic resolution X-ray mapping has been achieved. Other techniques for STEM, such as STEM tomography, allows the complete three-dimensional internal and external structures of a specimen to be reconstructed from a tilt series of 2D projection images of the specimen acquired at incremental tilts. High-angle ADF STEM is a particularly useful imaging mode for electron tomography because the intensity of high-angle ADF STEM images varies only with the projected mass thickness of the sample and the atomic number of atoms in the sample. This yields highly interpretable three-dimensional reconstructions. Cryostem, which is cryo-electron microscopy in STEM, allows specimens to be held in the microscope at liquid nitrogen and liquid helium temperatures. This is useful for imaging specimens that would be volatile in high vacuum at room temperature. Cryostem has been used to study vitrified biological samples and specimens containing elemental sulfur, which is prone to sublimation in electron microscopes at room temperature. Then we also have environmental stem. In order to study the reactions of particles in gaseous environments, a stem may be modified with a differential pump sample chamber to allow gas flow around the sample. Alternatively, a holder mounted with an enclosed gas flow cell may be used. Nanoparticles and biological cells have been studied in liquid environments using liquid phase electron microscopy in STEM. This is accomplished by mounting a microfluidic enclosure in the specimen holder. Then we have low voltage STEM. Uh, a low voltage STEM electron microscope uh, is designed to operate at relatively low electron accelerating voltages of between 0.5 and 30 kilovolts. Some LVEMs can function as a SEM, a TEM and a STEM in a single compact instrument. Using a low beam voltage increases imaging contrast, which is especially important for biological specimens. This increase in contrast significantly reduces or even eliminates the need to stain biological samples. Resolution of a few nanometers are possible in TEM, SEM and STEM modes. The low energy of the electron beam means that the permanent magnets can be used as lenses and thus a miniature column that does not require cooling can be used. Thank you for attending this course. I hope you learned something and uh, you are welcome to ask us any questions. Please feel free to check out the Central Analytical Facility on Facebook and also our webpage.